All right, the program is still here this morning on ITV on independent television. And uh, we're still looking at uh, the ongoing strike and backed upon by members of uh, the Academic Staff Union of uh, Nigeria Universities, ASO. Uh, this morning, we are so privileged to have uh, two uh, men here. Uh, first and foremost, uh, they are members of uh, NAS. Uh, NAS stands for the National Association of Nigerian Students. Uh, we have uh, Odiahi Thomas Ihine, uh, who is the National uh, Vice President, uh, Special Duties in NAS. Uh, so you welcome to this program this morning on ITV. And uh, also, we've got uh, Foster Amadi Osaze, uh, who is uh, the SUG President, uh, Unibet, uh, and they're also a member of NAS. Osaze, you welcome to uh, this program. Thank you, and Dennis Zofik, my co anchor you're welcome to Dennis, you're welcome. All right. Uh, all right. So uh, let's hit the ball rolling one more time. Uh, we understand uh, that uh, you guys are planning a national action. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the next day, we saw that uh, some few days ago, uh, whereby uh, there was protests here and there. Uh, but let's talk about this national action uh, because there may be implications. It may be hijacked and all that. What do you think, uh, how do you intend to go about this national action in such a way that at the end of the day, uh, it will achieve the desired result that you guys uh, want to? I'll start with uh, uh, Mr. Odiahe. Thank you very much. Well. Uh for us, at this point in time, we have uh, no other option. We are aware of uh, whatever implication there may be uh, as, as a result of uh, us going out on the street. And uh, for us, it is uh, a call to actually cause uh, disaffection in uh, you know, whatever activities it is that uh, you know, as it relates to the government or the public. That is the only way for us now to actually attract uh, the attention of uh, the government. So. Whether or not there are going to be aftermath application or those of us who are spared with the affair, I think as activists at this point in time, uh, we actually don't care about that. All that we are concerned about is we want Nigerian students to have access back to their various uh, classrooms. So, and uh, we are taking to the street all uh, our state chapters, the joint campus committees who are in charge of the states, and uh, the SUG presidents of the various institutions the zonal uh, structures and the national, they already have the mandate, it's before them, to do whatever it is uh, they want to do. Constitute nuisance where needed, in mm -hmm. as much as uh, they should not go there. Constitute nuisance where needed? Where needed, on the public street. Yeah, because once you're barricading the federal highway, it is not uh, your legal right. But for us, since our government has decided not to listen to our plan. It is Nigeria in anarchy. I think Are I'm we in an, an, an anarchy state now? I, I, when you I, I, say I, I, constitute nuisance, and uh, you also say that you don't care about the implications. At this point in time, we are ready for it. So it's, whether, uh, whether it is hijacked or not? Well, we, we don't want to look at it from that uh, angle. Going out, we are uh, uh, you know, uh, civil students, mm -hmm. and it's expected that, yes. Yeah, so if it's going to be hijacked, I think maybe we should look at uh, the government sponsoring talks against us or those who are not in support of our actions. But we are going out in... Uh, uh, in, in a coordinated manner. Yeah, being there, they will tell you that it is not your right to infringe on the right of others. Mm. So, which is why I have to label it to say, okay, fine, uh, wherever you want to see it, okay, public nuisance, but we are taking to the street with our beds, our phones, and uh, if possible, we are urging Nigerian students to come out with their cooking utensils. Okay, I'll leave uh, some other questions to uh, Dennis now. Okay, um, uh, I think I would like to ask um, uh, Amadi, SUG uh, president of Unibet. Um, also, they talk something about the fact that um, what they are more concerned about is uh, um, the quality of students that they graduate. I mean, if you look at the, the strike now, it's been lingering, and then now it's been extended for another 12 weeks, according to them, is warning. So mm -hmm. probably after uh, the 12 weeks warning strike now, they will move to another phase of the strike, uh, maybe indefinite this time around, if government doesn't uh, uh, wake up to its responsibility. So I want to ask you as a student, um, now, if you look at how far it has gone, no solution has been, no agreement has been reached yet, but then a lot of grants have been lost. Do you think um, in all of this that um, you will still be able to, to meet up, um, even though um, we are also on this part, the lecturers on their parts cannot uh, really tell us how they will be able to cover the grants? Okay. Um, thank you for that question. Um, <clears throat> I will start by saying, it often said when two powerful pro fight, mm. definitely the people suffers when two powerful forces are mm. fighting. 
And these are people that did not even call for the conflict in the first place, but they are the ones suffering the brunt okay. of this conflict. So I think uh, on that end, the students are actually the ones suffering whatsoever decisions they are making or they are not making, their actions and their inactions. And um, just like every union would fight for the interest of its members, ASU is fighting for their interest, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, you think they're not fighting for the students? As far as I'm concerned right now, ASU are fighting for their interest. Now, you saying they're not fighting for the students? I have not said they're not fighting for the <laughs> no, students. No, I mean, that's a But, but I'm, saying, I'm saying every interest, yeah, every yeah. interest group fights for the interest of its members. Yes. Mm. So for ASU to be at home, mm. and um, for them to go about their normal businesses, and um, for students to be at home for the past um, 80 days with the additional three months. So I feel at this point, yeah. they are fighting for their interest. Why we are also fighting for our interest, which is going back to our classrooms. I think we have stayed home too, too much. And um, it was uh, eminent and sacrosanct that we express our own plight and grievances through the miss, or the only miss, so to say, that we have after due consultation and consolidation. Yes. So at this point, we are at this stage where we are to confront whosoever concerned to call back the strike. Uh, like you were saying, if ASU is fighting for the student's interest, I think they will be in better to answer that. But for me, mm. I know what my interest stands for. And my interest is going back to class. I have not seen an iota of that interest in any of the actions can, can, can that I, have been displayed both mm. from the federal government okay. and from the ASU. Can okay. I ask you a question? Yeah. Why exactly uh, do you think ASU is embarking on this track? Okay. There are several reasons why they were, they, we learned of this track. We talked about the Utah's payment and the uh, IPPS converting. They talked about uh, revitalization of institutions. Mm. So if you know that, why will you say that ASU is fighting for mm. its own interest? Mm. Because even from lecturers, I've yeah. well told me that they don't need revitalization to teach. What they need, give me my money, I can teach you We're not well, looking at what some lecturers have told you. Let's stand on the position of objectivity. Yeah. Let's okay. look at the objective of what ASU is calling for. Mm. I think uh, earlier uh, the NAS understand that, members of NAS understand that better for them. Now, I'll come back to uh, Mr. Ikine one more time. Now, you talked about, uh, he mentioned that uh, they are ready to confront whoever mm. is stopping them from receiving lecturers and all that. If I get out from what you said, that was what he was trying to imply. Uh, but let's look, at, um, let's look at the students. We're talking about people that are civil, I don't want to use the word that are supposed to be civil. Uh, let me say they are civil, because I was once a student, so I went through that civility and all that. Now, don't you think we should begin, students should begin to uh, consider other alternative ways of trying to draw government's attention, uh, rather than trying to uh, cause, uh, you know, some attention that may result to uh, public <coughs> disorderliness and that some persons uh, may have to hi hijack Mr. Akine. Well, thank you very much. I think, uh, yes, like you said, ordinarily we would have been subscribing to that uh, position. But we are not because even those who are our lecturers, those uh, who taught us uh, peace and conflict resolution, yeah. on the need to always embrace a uh, dialogue, mm. they have, uh, to a very reasonable extent too, decided not to also embrace that same dialogue. But I don't see it to be right situation whereby uh, an employer and an employee mm. you know, decides to uh, disagree knowing fully well how vital their area of concern is, which is uh, what brought them together, education. Education is a basic amenity that the government ought to be providing. Mm -hmm. Now, on our various campuses, where there are issues, and the students decide to say, OK, uh, we are not uh, in support of this. We want to protest. Most of these uh, ASU members who are the ones in charge of uh, the various institutions, mm -hmm. they will tell you, no, don't do this, don't do that. We can also know now say, OK, uh, we are leaving our various uh, classrooms because we have uh, issues. Mm. So what we are telling us rather to subscribe to is fine. Go and negotiate with your employer. But in doing that, why you people on the negotiating table? So why do you have to vacate uh, you know, uh, the classroom? Mm. That is one issue. Now, talking about the uh, issues on ground, I think for us, the major problem of us is uh, the IPPIS and UCAS. Mm. The federal government is saying, where, as our employee, you cannot, people cannot be the one deciding for us the platform we should use or utilize in paying uh, 
you people. And we don't know if uh, they have the right to or not. But like uh, Mr. President said, for us, all that concerns Nigerian students at all levels, whether first degree, masters and all, is that they want to have access back to their classrooms. Mm. They want their lecturers to return back and lecture them. Because uh, they are talking about promotion. Their promotion, they are talking about uh, salary allowances, revitalization of universities. I must, uh, to a very large extent, commend uh, the federal government, uh, you know, to some extent. Why so? Third Fund is doing a nice job. Mm. And Third Fund is a federal government uh, establishment. Mm. Now, when you go to most of our uh, universities, most mm -hmm. of the major projects, there are projects that were executed by, by Third Fund. Third Fund. Yeah. Now, most of these uh, lecturers, too, the, their attitude towards education itself is bad. A situation whereby a lecturer will, uh, a course you're supposed to take for a period of uh, four months in consideration of the mental health of uh, the students, for whatever reasons, because you have affiliation with other institutions, you would want to take that particular course in a month without considering the mental health of that particular student. Mm. You know, you overload that particular child, and at the end, that child comes out, uh, you know, poorly, and you too, you are still the one complaining. So I believe this uh, IPPIS and UTAS would let us know where all these our lecturers have affiliations, mm. whereby you are working in Ambassador League University or Uniben, and you still have affiliation with the uh, OAU or whatever, in any other university in the country, and before you know, you spend more time there, than your, the primary place where you were employed. Mm -hmm. So also, we, also, we also feel that this uh, IPPIS team would address that. Okay. If they have... <laughs> yeah, just go on. Uh, if they have uh, other areas, yeah. you know, where the, the, few, okay, the IPPI affects whatever it is they are supposed to be earning, yes. they should bring it forth. Okay. All right, now, let me come to Amade. Uh, because uh, you are the SDG president in the Ben chapter here. If you go to halls of residence now in your school, all around your school, uh, you still have a quantum uh, number of students, uh, you know, ho uh, you know, staying around and all that. Uh, are there ways uh, that the SUG Unibank chapter or perhaps other SUGs uh, across the country is trying to engage uh, these students in a productive uh, way? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, so that even with the strike, uh, they would have, you know, achieved something. Okay, I think at this at this point, um, we are not new to the normal Nigerians routine, predicaments, and problems. Now, the truth is, everybody expects everyone to learn a skill. We have been learning skills since God knows when. I think I have learned how to, bag, to cut air in one of the strikes. During uh, 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 COVID-19, I learned how to make clothes. <laughs> how many skills will I learn? But, but, but don't you think that could fetch money for you now? Of course, it could fetch. It could fetch but it's so good. why don't you do it? Well, my academics is being stagnated, and I have other better plans for myself. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'm saying, I'm asking this question, Amadi, uh, because so as to kind of encourage other students. Because I, I, I'll tell you, some pests, some students are already engaging in some negative things around. Uh, so that's, 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 the, that's the reason we are saying the federal government and the ASU to make us go back to our classrooms for okay. us not to engage in more deviant activities in the society. If you don't want to breed deviance, if yeah. you don't want to breed um, um, uh, negativity, negativity mm, yeah. in the arts of youth, of course, the uh, another man is the devil's workshop. Mm. And the truth is, uh, the consistent time, or when you keep doing a particular thing, the less satisfaction you have, that's the law of diminishing return. Mm. And you can't take it away. If we keep doing, I keep going to one particular place over and over, I will derive dissatisfaction from it. So I think at this point, the only thing we need is not even learning skill anymore. Let's just finish our school and continue with our lives. Okay. All right. Let's yeah. finish our school. And we are not fighting for ASU. Neither are we fighting okay. against ASU. And we are not even for federal government. Neither are we fighting against All we want is going back to our classroom. Federal government should come to an agreement table with ASU and let both of them come to a compromise end mm. to ensure we go back to our classroom. Yeah, because I feel... Yeah, okay. They about ne coming to negotiation table. Yes, because have I... You have, been, have you been part of... Have you ever been part of the that, negotiation That's even another problem. <laughs> After meetings, we come here, ASU says this, and federal government says this is what, this is what happened. So I feel that at this I'll point, if everyone is even fighting for the interests of these same students. Mm. They should always ensure students are part of their negotiations. Let's know and let's hear from the office itself what they are saying. Because as it stands, after meetings end, mm. we come back and we start reading in the net. We keep our eyes glued to our phone, only for us to come back and start seeing things that are not favorable to either us and uh, favorable to either the government. So as, as it even stands now, we don't even know who 
is not even wanting us to go back to our classrooms. If it's either the ASU or either the federal government. So, and, and, and on that phase, I can as well, I can as well say, if every other of ASU needs should be met and if representation is not met, won't they go back to their classrooms? If they should be paid, the UTAS is granted. Won't they go back? And if they, won't they go back to their well, classrooms? We cannot ask and that for the question federal government here because the members of the ASU are not here. Uh, but one thing is very clear, uh, Dennis. Uh, that even the students they understand the situation. And of course, uh, they are willing uh, that uh, the federal government should listen to uh, uh, the lecturers. Because, and, uh, yeah. because if it's hijacked, I'm wondering who loses more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so a very big thank you to uh, Ihine, who is uh, a member of NAS and the vice president of uh, 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 Vice President NAS Special Duties. So thank you so much for finding time yeah, to come. And uh, also my comrade, Amadi Osaze, the SDG president in Ben Chapter. Thank you so much for uh, coming. What program is still here this morning on ITV? Please stay tuned.